Now, what about other editing tools? What I'm <coughs> mostly thinking of is how you can get these two, actually three roof parts together. So there's a huge gap. Yeah. How are you going to, going to bridge that? So let's talk about the roof editing tools that we have. So um, <coughs> there, is the, there is this roof. Uh, first, before we go on, let me just make it visually closer to, the, to this other one. Uh, so I just uh, quickly find this material here, uh, which is this one, and I just drag and drop it here. And I say that replace this material with another that on this object here and here. So now they are visually similar. I could do the same thing by simply saving this as a uh, you know, style. style and then apply it to the other uh, roof uh, itself. But now that I have these, uh, sometimes it happens that you would like to combine two different roofs because the roof is either so complex that you cannot uh, just simply draft it by, by one roof. Because as you can see, if you have one roof, uh, the outer roof, and that's the, that's the whole point of using an outer roof if you can, is that it's automatically creating the connections between the roof uh, planes. But if I have one roof and I have another one, they are not automatically combined. And there's a reason to that. Um, there's, there's usually the, the, the design option that you can choose you would like to do that or not. So let me just try to combine them visually first. Um, the, this roof plane itself, uh, this roof uh, complex it, uh, shape itself is uh, this one here on the, on the 2D. So now if I click and, and try to enlarge it, I click here and I say, I would like to offset it, I don't know, with a certain value like this. So now it's larger. And as I can see, it's intersecting uh, the other, other roof nicely. And this is what we see from the outside. But from the inside, it's something. Well, it's not that the best result because it reaches have. in. So. Yeah, so they are actually not meeting each other, they are actually just simply overlapping each other. So if I just would like to intersect themselves, uh, then I need to use a specific tool for that, and uh, that is called uh, the info tool. Uh, let me just try to align this like this. It's, it, it will look nice. And then I just click here and here to further highlight it, and then I just click on the 3D uh, rebuild, and this makes only these two items visible in the 3D. So you can isolate the things that you yeah, want to work Still, of course, the rest of the project is... is uh, uh, existing, but now I can just focus on this problem. So uh, the issue here is that uh, I need to find where these uh, planes meet each other, and then kind of just you know cut, cut the, the rest off. excess roof parts. Yeah. So uh, how to do that? If you already have these two roofs, uh, then you just click on the roof and use the local menu, the contact sensitive menu, and there you can find something called the info, and there is this intersection of two roofs. The other one is for simpler reasons, but now this is what we need. And then I click on the other roof, uh, which is taking part in this uh, meeting. And then now uh, see, there is this line here drafted automatically. This is just a helper. So they are not intersected automatically. That's just, uh, just, just a helper. And I can do whatever I want with mm -hmm. this information. This is just a polyline, right? <coughs> yeah, so. that's just a polyline. As you can see, it's, it's, it's nothing 3D. It's just a polyline at the left hand side, the software is telling me. So uh, sometimes I even turn it to red to, to just see that, well, this is really just a, just a draft line here. So <clears throat> how to use this information? First things first, I click on the smaller roof, for example, and I tell the software that I should actually cut off these parts. Now, there is one tool that you can use to, to chop off parts or, 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 or punch holes into the roof, and that's the hole tool in the roof. So you can just go to the local setting and say that you would like to create a hole and then just simply follow that contour along the edges of the original roof and the common part. And once that's done, the software will actually remove the excess part. Now, this, this dash line, I will explain later, what we need to uh, take um, in, into consideration is the, is, solid the, line. is the solid line. But itself. now only one roof is actually uh, trimmed. The other part is, is still there, <laughs> so there's no there's no transition from one to the other. Yes, sometimes it's enough because some, if I wanted this, then I'm done. But if yes, I would like to go, uh, if this is in use and inhabited or something, and I would like to pass from one roof part uh, under to the other, then I just need to repeat this uh, whole thing with the other roof and then just uh, use the um, hole, uh, create hole. And then what happens now, I just simply follow the common parts and the edges of this other side of the roof and when I'm done then they are nicely 
uh, joined together here in the 3D, as you can see here. So this is what happens now. Perfect. So that's how you can you can trim <coughs> the roof bars together. And the rest is only the setting of the of the same uh, thicknesses and so on. So if you still have some uh, geometric issues, as you can see that there is a gap coming off or something like that, it's usually because you don't use the same uh, settings. You just need to make them come on, then the software will work fine. You mentioned that you are going to talk <coughs> about the dashed lines and the solid lines, but, but how they differ. And also, there's another <coughs> place where we could illustrate the the hole cutting tool on the roof parts. Yes, if you could show that. Yes, yeah, so now talking about the first, how these, the di what's the differences between these yes. uh, countries? Let me just uh, use the use a simple example, and then we will go to the to the more detailed uh, introduction. So now, as you can see here, clearly there is a dashed part and um, a solid, solid line. line part, which is always the case. Even if you just only see one, that, that means they are overlapping each other. Uh, but by default, you will have this outer contour and the inner contour. The inner contour is the, what we call the structural contour. This is what the software uses to draft the, uh, the, the roof itself, and it's equaling uh, equally to the, to, the, to the lines that you drafted when you created the automatic roof or the roof shape itself. This is why the dash line here follows the outer lines of my walls, because that's where I uh, clicked. And here it's different. And the outer contour is the roof plane shape. Now, let me demonstrate quickly what's the difference between the two. I'm changing this edge. I'm actually inserting a node here by simply clicking somewhere. See, now the roof plane has changed. And this is how it has changed. There so is that's how extension. you can create extra overhangs or extensions yeah. or things or like that. Or some fancy counter or something like this. This is how you can do that. And if I do it the other way around, and I click here on this one, and they do the same thing, insert node, and about the same size, I just stretch it out. Then the whole roof structure itself changes. I see. Because now I broke up this part here, and I told the software that there should be a plane here, there should be a plane, another plane here, another, another, another here. So this is how the roof will understand the changes in case I change the structural contour. So that's how you can actually break <coughs> up one roof piece into s certain smaller segments. If you, if you see this. Uh, yeah, let the, me just the, quickly change yes. uh, the, the building itself because we will work uh, here on this one. OK, and yes. I was just uh, <coughs> telling that if, if you want to create a, a shape like that one, yeah. you can either, as we, as we discussed, you can start with the auto-defined roof tool and, and adjust the pitch and shape until you end up with something like that. But if you, if you realize that some of the planes are missing, that's how you can add them. Yes, and in connection to what we just discussed, uh, together with what you just told, uh, you can actually combine a, a site survey measurement uh, with the knowledge that we will cover in the following session that you can actually build up a roof plane by plane when it's necessary. That's a little bit uh, more, you know, you, you have to work a little bit more on that, but sometimes it's just it's something that you yes. cannot avoid. In that case, if you cannot use the, uh, the auto roof for any reason, there's still the option to, to, you know, build the roof plane by plane. So I have actually just loaded this uh, other building part. So here we can discuss uh, Partially the same thing and, and a little bit about the new things. And that's how we can set up a roof above this part here. Let me just uh, build up the 3D model, but in this case, only the, this uh, building part with, uh, with all the floors uh, of it. That's another good tip to actually conserve processing power, so just build yeah. up the things that you want to work on. So we cannot see uh, all the details of this project now but only the ones that I'm interested in, and it's here, this one. So I'm about to create a roof shape like this uh, to show how something like this is, is created. So first I select it and I erase it. And uh, then let's just draft it uh, by, by using the same tools here. So first things first, again, let's just go to the roof tool, use the auto roof, and there's this uh, rectangle, I think uh, that will be fine. And I just click on this edge, this edge, and I completely cover the whole part here. And then uh, using the previous knowledge that we already had, I just simply go and set up the settings, or I just simply pick one of these uh, settings, and I, I will actually today go with this one here. Uh, so I, I don't want to take time setting up all the rest of the details. Yes. See, there is this overhang, and this actually tells me uh, how long the, uh, the roof will stretch out from the contour that I have created. And I would like to actually set up 
um, a different setting for the pitch and shape on this edge. I would like to turn this to a gable end and turn this to a gable end, update. And how do you make this into an asymmetric uh, proof part? Because it is an <coughs> asymmetric. Yeah, it should be, actually. As we can see that now it's, um, let me just enlarge this. So it's, uh, the pitch is not correct and it, uh, the center is here and it should be here. Yeah, in that case, uh, there, is, there is two options. One is that you can actually draft a larger roof and cut off the rest because this is how it, the original was created. But there is another setting that I'm about to show and this, you can actually elevate one side of the roof and this way make it uh, asymmetrical because the roof is always building up the roof on the contour lines and you can elevate one of the contour lines and sometimes this is more useful. So talking about this, let me just change the roof pitch first. I think it's around um, it's around it's around 20 or 22 or so. And let's just apply this for the for the whole roof. And then talking about this uh, elevation, as you can see, there is this elevation of the reference line. And now I'm about to elevate the reference line. Let me just uh, go back to the 2D because I think this will be more uh, informative. So this here. What is the reference line? The reference line is this, the dash line, the structural line. So now I can only change the, 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 the elevation of the reference line at two levels only because uh, I have two uh, planes it's themselves, but the rest is turned off. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I have more, then I can do them plane by plane. So I just click here, go to the details, say, OK, there's this pitch and shape. And I'm about to change this here, this one. And this should be elevated, I don't know, 1.8 or even more above the, uh, above the, the, the uh, compared to the, to the other one. Yes. So this is actually push it, the pushing it higher, right? The two. Yes, yes. So, uh, I, but I think the, the proper value should be around uh, three or something. So, in this case, this is what I end up with. Mm -hmm. And okay. And then this happens, and then now I can push back the the, the whole yes. thing uh, yes. below, which I can either do uh, visually. Uh, this happens when I'm still in conceptual phase and I don't have, you know, values that I, I would like to use. I just would like to align them together to, to, to match. And if this happens, what, what happens now, it's because there are, uh, at the right hand side, as you can see, there are reference points and the software is now t sticking to those points, which is okay because this is, this is uh, the guarantee that I can actually work properly when I would like to snap uh, points to something else. But if I'm in this situation like this, it's not useful, not quite useful because it's always jumping off. And in this case, I just turn off the object snap for a while and then I can just easily uh, graphically uh, move it someplace else and when I find the proper position I just click and then I turn this back on because from the you would need that this, later yeah on. yeah from this point on I need it. now there are actually two <coughs> details here what, what we could use to illustrate things that we just discussed one is the is the cutout for the terrace yeah the other one is the the overhang just above the entrance so let's let's start with whichever yeah let's let's start with the with the hole because that was the last time uh, we created so it's easy to remember now just go and select the roof go to the settings, uh, use the hole, and there is the create hole, and then you just follow the contours. You, this could be a way more complex, but let's just keep it simple. I just draft a um, you know, rectangle, and then that's, that's what happens on the right-hand side. So now yes. we have nice opening to leave sunshine into this uh, interior. And the, the other thing that we discussed here, it's again, it's, it's a matter of choice what I, what I do here. I can change the structural contour inserting two nodes here, turn this into a curved edge, resulting, uh, well, this cannot be done. Perhaps the roof shape would be something that cannot be drafted, so I just make it something smaller or something like that. So, so this is what happens. It's a completely different roof shape. It, it's now even not useful for me. So what I do, I just go back and go back and go back. And what I really want to do, I just would like to cover this but like an extension of this uh, roof shape here, not, not like a cone or something like that. So in that case, I just click here, uh, I insert a node here, I insert a node, uh, another one here. Sometimes I even use draft lines to, you know, to mark the yes, to help intersection you of these uh, points to create a helper line and I just really would like to uh, extend this to a certain value and then it, it's already covered.